Okay, how's everybody doing? It's Wednesday and uh, just got home from a trip and heard this incredible news about these two women, uh, Jessica Renzicek and Ruby Montoya, who sabotaged the, the Dakota Access Pipeline and uh, admitted to it on video uh, two days ago uh, outside the Iowa Utilities Board. They went there, they had some media, they talked about what they did, they read their press release and then they uh, started to tear down the sign um, in protest and they were arrested for that action and then let go on bail so they actually uh, last I heard haven't been arrested for um, for the sabotage and the arson uh, but I highly recommend you check out their press release it's very interesting and uh, definitely support these women we've got some friends who are looking at putting together an interview with them and the political prisoner support group is looking at what we can do in terms of um, financial support, legal support, um, as they uh, likely are going to be charged here with some pretty serious crimes. But what is fascinating to me, one thing that's fascinating to me about this press release is they talk about how uh, in May they used a cutting torch and they sabotaged the uh, the pipeline. They did some cuts on these valves and uh, and they talked about how their attack was hidden from the public and it was described as a uh, you know described as some other issue that had caused the um, caused the delay in construction, not sabotage. So it's interesting to me because I think that there are, there are certain situations in which it's in a corporation's best interest or a government's best interest to disclose that there's been sabotage, to drum up. Uh, public opposition and outrage and you know invoke terrorism invoke whatever the latest political specter is to get people um, get people afraid you know boost their budgets um, allow them to curtail civil liberties and so forth but there are other situations in which it's in their best interest to hide what's going on and to not tell people about these attacks and obviously this was one of those circumstances they their thought process must have been, you know, we don't want, we don't want people doing copycat actions. We don't want people understanding that these tactics can be effective, that sabotage can be effective at stopping this pipeline. And you know, we see that these two people alone fighting the pipeline made a huge difference. They added months of delay, and that's something that tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people involved in the, the big public Standing Rock protests were able to cause huge delays, and, and, uh, but they weren't ultimately able to stop the pipeline. And so, you know, I think that there's a lot, uh, a lot to learn from this action, and I think it's pretty amazing that um, the reason these two women came forward is because they wanted the truth to be known, to be known, excuse me. And to me, that's very important because it points to the fact that there are likely many more of these actions happening than we know about, but it's not in the corporation's best interest to tell us because the stories of resistance are inspiring and they know that, and they know that this is a dangerous thing, so they don't want to tell us. So I applaud these two women, and uh, we'll probably have more to say on this in the future. Thanks.